now and we'll Radio Campbell's comments on location here at sunny Northern Rivers Equine. Kath McIntosh joins me. Kath, how are you? Very well, thanks, Paul. Getting very excited for all these yearling sales. Been a nice couple of days down here um, doing some filming. I've already had a couple of inquiries when are the videos going up, but we've been doing the videos today uh, and yesterday, and we've had a bit of fun. And um, Mark Hughes has come along to join us to just do a bit of a promo of your draft, Kath. Yeah, that's it. We're um, extremely proud and excited about the draft that we've got uh, to go to the nutrient sales. Um, you know, on behalf of our vendors, Lauriston Bloodstock and the Baisley Syndicate, um, Moreland Equine, um, David Scott and Gus and Eva Underwood. Um, it's a fantastic group of horses. We've got 12 paces and three trotters and really there's a horse there for everyone in the draft. And uh, yeah, the quality of the horses um, is, is fantastic. Like, yeah, couldn't be happier. And, uh, and also the fact that a lot of these families are very current, like they've got siblings that are, are actively um, racing out there and, and going extremely well at the moment. So yeah, looking forward to it. Mark, you're excited about this this sale, April 10 and 11. Don't forget the Nutrient Equine sale, April 10 and 11. Yeah, afternoon, guys. Yeah, look, I think there's a genuine air of excitement in the air about um, Saturday and Sunday week. Um, just talking to a lot of people around the traps that, uh, you know, that little break at the end of the breeding season and um, a chance to lock and load and heads, you know, and to get the, the yearlings to a optimum point in April. And the fact that we've got a change of um, environment for a lot of vendors, there's just a lot of excitement out there. And looking at videos and visiting four or five places in the last four weeks, you can see the standard of yearling is gone to another level this year. It has. I've been fortunate enough to go around to quite a few studs. Off the back of what you sort of gave as a brainwave last year of doing a live yearling parade and being able to promote horses in that live manner and being able to see these horses in the flesh, it's sensational. We're coming up to Easter, this is going to be released tonight, and we're coming up to Easter. Great opportunity for people to get around and have a look at all these horses in the calf, not just your draft, make sure they get around and look at everyone's draft. Yeah, I think, um, you know, everyone's welcoming inspections and um, I think there's so much hard work that goes into these yearlings right from, you know, from when they're bred, you know, it's a long road. So, you know, the inspections are welcome. Come and have a look at what these breeders have, have bred for you to, to train and race. Um, and, uh, you know, over Easter, you know, kicking back, relaxing, it's a good opportunity to have a look at all those wonderful yearling photos out there. There's a lot of live footage there as well. And, um, yeah, just really showcasing what the breeders have done. I'm excited about the content that people have been putting out, Mark. It's been good. It's, it's getting up with what the Kiwis have been putting out probably for a little while and um, raising the bar and getting higher and higher, I suppose. Yeah, look, I think so. And in this day and age, uh, the information age, we've you know we've just got access on any amount of platforms for people to view these yearlings. And look, it's probably January last year when we started this little uh, thing. The three of us got together ahead of um, the draft they took to Melbourne for the sales last year, and then Bathurst here at Northern Rivers. And um, everybody's looked at that idea that we've created here, and um, a lot of people have locked onto it and have carried forward this year, which is terrific. It's great you mentioned Bathurst. You were there the other day, Caf, but Bathurst is supporting this sale. Uh, IRT, Pat Driscoll are getting some of those Kiwi trotters back over to New Zealand if anyone wants to get a buy. So many people coming and saying, listen, we want to raise the bar, we want to give us some incentives. They're getting involved in it, putting their money where their mouth is, I suppose, is one way of putting it in it, Caf. Yeah, that's right. And um, it just uh, gives everyone an opportunity um, and, and access to these horses that they've never had before. Yep, and your draft is exceptional. Um, we are going to go through these horses one by one. This is pre-recorded. This is only a quick glimpse of what we will be doing. I've got to go home and do all the editing um, later on tonight and probably all day tomorrow, Calf. But what we decided we'd do is just showcase some of these horses, just a quick walk up and down, a front on and back on shot um, and a little fly around. But please, when these videos get released on the Nutrien website and on Calf's website, make sure you go there and check them out And because um, there's going to be a lot more content around. I've, I loved some of the things we've done. The paddock shots are just spectacular I think you you have yeah, to there's it, a lot going into it but uh, it was spectacular some of the footage yeah it's a lot of hard work getting those um, free running you know bits of footage in the paddock but and my heart was in my mouth just watching them you know bucking and, and pig reading <laughs> and running around and having a wow of a time but it, you know you can just really start to see the athlete that they are um, how they move their stride and um, and you know about their confirmation as well so I think that in conjunction with you know walking in hand um, and sort of having a 360 degree look around the horse gives everyone a bit of a glimpse of what they're like before they get to the sales and they can come and check them out again then and some spectacular photos done by Southcom FH um, um, Desiree's done a beautiful job yeah, and we've worked in conjunction she's done a great job helping me out as well as 
all your staff as as well. You can't do this without your staff, and they were they were terrific yeah. yesterday, especially today's been an easy day compared to yesterday, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I think we're you know for me this um, this group of horses, we've uh, you know ninety percent of them we've actually bred fold down, and they've been here their entire life. And so you know, credit to um, Renee, who's our, our main stud hand, that she's handled these horses, and they're incredibly well mannered and educated. And it just means that when you go and let them loose in a paddock, you just know that just got a bit more confidence in what they're going to do and know that when they go after the breakers that they're um you know they're going to be nice horses for people to handle absolutely yeah that's one thing and yeah. mark i found out where kicking your heels out comes from because you should have heard the clicks of the back shoes when they were bucking <laughs> bucking it wasn't one it was quite a quite a few of them well we'll start off um we i never edit these but we will i will say right now we've got to stop this halfway through because kath is an extremely busy lady she's actually got to shoot off so we will stop it come back and keep recording it once she gets back but you're going to shoot off in a sec but we've got a couple of minutes to keep yeah. going and we, yeah, yeah Cathal tells. We'll start off. We're going to go through them in um, numerical order. Right, we're going to start with lot number 34, Kabbalah Karen B. Um, I hope that was close to being right for you guys, but this is a lovely, lovely filly calf, isn't it? Ah, oh, she's gorgeous. She's a little spunky monkey, and she is just a pocket rocket. Um, she's uh, actually probably bigger, uh, one of her bigger um, progeny of, from the mare. So I'm a little general, um, was very little. Um, you know, ladies in red, she's not an overly big filly either. And yeah, this, this girl, she's a great walking, good natured, um, but yeah, she's got a fire in her belly and ready to go. She, she was a lot of fun yesterday. It's a great pedigree, Mark, isn't it? Oh, well, look, it's just a sensational pedigree. Um, by resident staying in American Ideal out of um, Ann and Bill Anderson's, one of their time honored families, and a mare they purchased from North America. Um, two generations on the page, $5 million in earnings on that page. The, the great, you know, the Queensland staying, Cami Best is on it, and a lot of very, very good horses close up in the first generation. Um, she speaks for herself. She does, and she shows herself in a minute. We'll get the fly around. Uh, won't be far off coming. And, and she was such a nice filly to deal with, Kath. I, when I actually seen her, I thought, oh, this will be the hot one to deal with. But she was actually so good to just be around, wasn't she? Yeah, she is. She's um, well-educated and well-mannered. But, you know, you get her out of the box, and she just wants to get into work and, um, and you know, let's go. And that's what she's all about. And, um, you know, in last year preparing her um, sibling, um, she was much the same in attitude as well. So, you know, they're just a up and about right family and mark the um american ideals they've been superly uh, received by the kiwis and the likes haven't they yeah oh look his um narrative continues paul um as a great sire where, where does he stand kev he's third no where does he stand here huh? <laughs> he's here yeah. i was throwing i was throwing to you he stands here <laughs> he stands here he stands in new york but uh look you know fresh off the press in the last 24 hours pelosi won a heat of the um four and five year old championship at wagga last night had a double at um, gloucester park last night two three year olds so his narrative is strong and it just it'll it'll continue to be stronger keeps getting bigger shannon nixon i think posted a thing the other day is everyone staying that's just risen so much in the last couple of years and i, th I don't think anyone will argue with the fact that's for sure yeah well that's it that's him as well and for the first time in a long time he's second on the new zealand size premiership behind better's delight um, he's made two or three hundred thousand more than Art Major, so that's the sort of boy he's turned into. And he's leaving it as a broodmare sire now too. That's, his, that's moving into those ranks. Got some great video footage actually. He he can play in that paddock out the back too, can't he? <laughs> yeah. I got a bit of footage of him. <laughs> we'll produce it one day. Who knows when? When we get some spare time. Uh, next up, Kath is um, lot number forty-one, which is the well said out of left in Paris. This is an impressive type of filly, just in in For body lot alone. Number forty-six, isn't it? Lot forty-six. Sorry, which one did I say? Forty-one. Did I say 41? Yeah, it's 46. actually like 46. It is up there. I've said the wrong name, but that's fine. Uh, which is the well set out of left in Paris, the filly. Yeah, so she's a gorgeous filly. Um, she's just a, a lovely temperament um, and, uh, you know, just a great moving filly. Yesterday when we let her off for, around the paddock, you just think, you know, wow. Um, she does love her food. She's a very good doing filly. Um, but, you know, when she gets on that walker, um, comes off, the others will sweat it up, but she hasn't. She just wants to work. She's a powerhouse. Someone said Mac Truck, and, and in a nice way, like she, she wasn't going to stop. Like if yeah. she wanted to keep going, she was going to keep going. You could just see the way she was yeah. going around that paddock. Yeah, she she's was... just all chest and bum and very, very precocious um, type filly. Like she's always been forward right from being a foal, um, muscular and just a starting foal when she was born. So, and she's just carried that all the way through. And absolutely goes better. Another pedigree is hard to sell, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, very hard to sell. Um, and one of the things about this filly as well, she's an August foal. So by the time you see her in uh, next week, she'll be close, heading into being 18 months old. Um, out of a Group 1 winning life sign mare, Anne and Bill Anderson have had success with the well-said fillies, um, as you'll see through their draft here today. 
um, and the mare's a 100% producer. So, um, you know, ticks a lot of boxes and out of a life sign mare as well. We know a great job life sign's done. Yep, and as you can see there, she's a lovely built filly. She's got a broad back. Is possibly the politest way I can put it. Is that is that polite enough, Kath? Yeah, and it, but she's she's just muscle. Yeah, she's just all muscle. Absol- yeah. Absolutely, and she's just a nice type of filly. And she was a nice type of filly to do a lot of it with. We're probably going to be saying that over and over again a, a lot today, but um, that's just the way they, they, this draft has been. You know, I think, and I think the thing people have got to take note of as well, like just note that these, you know, I'll comment on these during the day, but the first two fillies there today are all eligible for all the classics as well. The Vic Bread, the Nutrient, they're in the Australasian Breeders' Crown as well. It's something we've people have got to find out and it's got to be reiterated along the way to them. Absolutely, and we'll, we'll get onto those topics right at the end of it as well, Mark, but we've got to keep re- reiterating it. Another American ideal, um, and this, I love this one. I love how this horse walks. It was just sort of like, wow, when I was doing the video out of Limerick Star. I keep going to say Limerick Lane. A lot of the thoroughbred people <laughs> will know what I'm on about, but um, just got a beautiful walk, Kath, hasn't she? Yeah, this girl is a supermodel. She's just gorgeous. Um, she's a stunning feeling. She always has been right through winter. You know, she had a beautiful coat on her. She has the best skin of all the all the horses. Um, and yeah, just uh, she's casual, um, but she can yeah get up and move like she did yesterday. And she's a big girl, but she's very muscular and forward. Stay tuned for the grass footage because her trot was sp- smick and uh, through the heavy stuff, she was even better. I, I was pretty impressed. That'll be the one that'll be going up through the heavy stuff. We did mow a strip for him, yeah. but uh, yeah, she just managed to just trot terrific. And another great pedigree headed by American Ideal, Mark. But yeah, look, um, I was saw this filly about three weeks ago, and one of the comments I made on the catalogue when we pulled her out was she was a. I said this filly walks with purpose. Yeah, and something I made in my notes when I was going back through everything the last couple of days. American Ideal out of Christian Cullen there that um, that cross works. Got to recall like this filly is a half sister to the. Perf- one none better a 148 eight winner at the Meadowlands winner of over 500 grand um, and campaigning up there again this year have a good look at this family mate three generations on the page including the Miracle Miles winner Spankham um, any amount of depth to this family yeah, and just Any a, amount. a mare that's got so much to offer, like a good yep, racehorse, yep. good build, and then there's a brood yep. mare later on as well. Like yeah. she's just got a lot going for her. There'd be a lot of residual in this filly as a brood mare. She's a magnificent type. I'd almost describe her as a glamazon. Absolutely. You go from Glamazon to uh, male model. Can I say? Can I? Can I say that? How was that for a segue? Yeah, segue eh? yeah, um, I reckon there's a lot of blokes who would like to look as good as what this bloke does. The better's delight out of make mine, Cullen Gaff. Over to you. I'm not going to say too yeah, much about this, him. Uh, this, yeah, what a what a mare he's for out of in make mine, Cullen. This is um, uh, he's a gorgeous boy. He's very much like his mother. Um, lovely, big frame, long barreled, and um, yeah, he's he's a well mounted colt. But you know, he does like to play. Um, and yeah, he just is a he, like with that cross, better as a light over Christian Cowan. You know, what else could you want? Oh, exactly. Go back to these grass uh, grass races, I was going to say, but the grass when they, we let them loose into the grass, he had an audience. Um, they come around just to, to watch him and he hooned. But he was so mature about how he did it as well, wasn't he? And yeah, um, yeah he's the, got a brain. He has got a, he has got a brain. Um, there was probably a few anxious moments for the person to my left, I reckon. But um, no, he was he was actually terrific. And he he's got the looks, and he has that well, as they call Mark the Golden Cross, isn't it? Yeah, look, um, about as delight out of um, a Christian colour mare. It's the dominant cross in the Southern Hemisphere. So you're talking Chicago Bull Lazarus. Um, but have a look at Mum, you know. 870,000 in the locker as a racehorse, three-time Australian Mayor of the Year. Um, you know, he ticks all the boxes, um, eligible for all the right races. Um, but also, and you've seen this year, the better's delight, Colts, you know, people want them. The old boy keeps delivering. Saturday night again at Bathurst. I know it was his girls at one, but at the tender age of 22, he, he just still owns the space, mate. Yep, absolutely. And he throws cracking colts like that. Phillies, he throws everything, and and that's one thing he he does do. Kath, he's you know probably going to be labelled as one of potentially the sale sale toppers um, in the sale. I think everyone's going to say they've got a sale topper in their in their in their barn and all the rest. But for the people that are thinking about him as a horse around the place, like I haven't heard him roar. I haven't heard a boo out of him. Um, we saw then. I think it was Pat that was walking him. Pat's pretty diminutive there's not a lot to pat and he was a gentleman for her he ticks all the right boxes in himself doesn't he 
Yeah, he's he's uh, an athlete, but he's got some intelligence that goes with it. And the the uh, broodmare mate, mine, Cullen, you know, she's just a beautiful natured horse. Um, it always was right through her race career as well. She's just, um, yeah, it, it does just ticks all the boxes. Absolutely, we will keep going um, through these ones. This little fella. Captain Treacherous, and there's a bit of an update. I think Mark's got a bit of an update there today uh, with Captain Treacherous as well. But um, out of musical delight, he's a goer, that's for sure. Yeah, this uh, family is going places. Um, this mare, Musical Delight, she's, um, everything that she's had, is, uh, she's left as one. Um, he's a December-born colt, um, but he is a two-year-old type all over. He's athletic, has great confirmation, um, and he's, yeah, he's just a lovely, lovely, neat type of horse. And uh, we prepped his brother, or half-brother, last year um, for the sales, and, and he's off to a brilliant start with his career up in New South Wales too, and they have a really good, big opinion of him and he's just he's a, he is a likely type i'll probably sound people you know i'm not going to say they're they're, they, they're a knockout or anything else like that but he does look the type that'll get up and go for you early on doesn't he yeah absolutely he's got he's got a lot going there mark yeah look another cult that'll be on a lot of people's lists and some notes i made going back about three weeks ago you can see he's going to be an early type um captain treacherous had another two-year-old winner today at addington there's an update um on that particular uh, side, but just remember, musical delight, better's delight, mare, Group One winner, two hundred and fifty thousand in the lockup. So um, the maternal pedigree lends a lot to this as well. Captain Treacherous doing a great job uh, in both North America, Australia, and New Zealand at this stage. You'd have to say he's uh, Woodland's rep, wouldn't you? He, he doesn't miss an opportunity at all to get better's delight or any of those. You know, he, he's doing he's doing a good job. He's had a week off. He's come back really <laughs> refreshed, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and he's, he is up and about. National Gallery, some beach somewhere is up next, Kath. Yeah, this is a, um, a lovely little filly. Um, she's a smart filly. She's a great walker um, and loves loves to work, loves the stimulation. Um, you know, if you're doing something with the horse next door to her, she's up and about and rearing and playing until you go in and give her a bit of attention. So she just, uh, yeah, she loves to get out there on that walker and um, she's all about work, this filly. And, and the whole family is, it's a, um, you know, and once again, Honolulu Bay, it's a great family. Um, that's active now. And a horse like Honolulu Bay, he's an excitement machine. He has a lot of X factor um, about him, that's for sure. He, he, he brings something to Australian racing that, um, you know, he, he's what Australian racing starting to go like, isn't it, Mark? Those Honolulu Bay type horses. Yeah, bigger, stronger, more athletic beast sort of um, elite performer. Um, so one thing, this is the only Sun Beach somewhere filly in the entire catalogue. Um, and the reality is going forward, Sun Beach somewhere will be a very good broodmare sire. Um, so here, be, here, this filly becomes automatic dual purpose purchase. Um, you know, there's three million in earnings on her page. So have a long, hard think about that. Three million. <laughs> These are the pedigree pages that you know that people who are serious long-term investors in the sport need to be looking at. Um, just from that point of view, and I'm sure she'll be on a lot of good people's lists. You know, they they know National Gallery by Arts Place. You know, it's just. Uh, ticks a lot a lot of boxes it does indeed um we will keep going through these because it's we've got quite a few to get through another well said there's two well said's offered up they're both i think loriston bloodstock courses yeah, yes right. yep and this one queen of pop calf um she has a little bit of pop about it too doesn't she yeah she does she's a cracker and uh she's um you know another filly like that left in paris are just um precocious two-year-old very um muscular and strong um and covers the but covers the ground with a lot of elegance um, and she's also a very intelligent filly and she loves to work as well. Yeah, and, and um, just a nice filly to be around, wouldn't she? She was done this morning and she's just a lovely filly. She was, I think, one of the first ones out and yeah. she was so obliging to us, which was really good after a long day yesterday doing um, a vast majority of them, Mark. Yeah, look, so an another well said filly out of the Lauriston draft and um, 9th of September foal as well. So by the time, you know, you get her to the breakers and that sort of thing, she'll be 18 months old. Um, but the key here is that her half-sister by Better's Delight won the um, Bathurst Gold Crown on Saturday night. Um, Just Hope. Just Hope, and, yeah. And um, looks like a very, very precocious early, you know, type of two-year-old that's going to carry on. Um, and just another one of these fillies out of the Lorison draft. If you're not looking at these from that dual purpose, long-term point of view... You've got to put that then, microphone to your mouth. And you have got, um, you know, you should be uh, considering going down that path. <laughs> and, you know, Queen of Pop, she's a sister <laughs> to Speak No Evil, um, who's also by Well Said. So this cross back to Well Said in Queen of Pop is, uh, you know, it's a great 
great uh, idea, I think. And you can see there, she's a lovely type of filly um, standing up there. Uh, we've got one out of Speak No Evil coming up. Hopefully, I haven't noticed Mark having his microphone down that low. Hopefully, he's been having it up to his mouth and people have been able to hear him quite properly all the way through. This bloke, um, <laughs> another one, uh, Captain Treacherous Rob Rogers Passion, um, out of the family calf of, um, you're going to say the surname because I get it wrong all the time. Um, Basley. Basley, thank you very much. We always go Basils. Um, very upright colt, isn't he, this bloke? He's always standing up, looking tall. Yeah, he's a strong colt. He's very relaxed about life, which is very much like his mother. Um, you know, and once again, another from another incredible family. He's got, uh, you know, very strong bone and um, a powerfully built colt. Um, you know, you just... It's just strength personified in him. The one thing about with this bloke here, the f video footage now, he, people will be saying, oh, he, you know, he's walking along slow. He, he's not, but he just takes his time. Don't he? he looks like he's going quick, but he actually takes his time. He, he's got the longest video that I've uploaded because um, he's just happy strolling along and, and, he, and he enjoying himself. Wasn't so good in the grass. He, he, he did enjoy getting out of the grass, I must say, but that's totally different. Mark's ready to go, don't worry. You're all right, Mark, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, so look, a November son of Captain Treacherous, and we've spoken about the job that Treacherous is doing both um, in the southern and northern hemispheres for um, Colts and Phillies. Um, obviously, a son of the great Sun Beach somewhere. But, you know, have a look at this pedigree. Roger's Passion is the daughter of actually of Intrude, who was the Australian Brood Mayor of the Year. So a great family with Make Mine Cullen, Supersonic Miss in it, and recent good winners, Good Time Hair of Heaven and um, current Good Free for All are in Victoria Sicario. So a very relevant pedigree again, and um, like the Captain T's, looks as though he's got an early, a little bit of early buzz about him and will go early. It does indeed. Next one is lot number 133, a betting line. Um, out of Rosie O'Reilly, and doesn't this one take the eye calf? It, uh, it's her first his... foal, I think, too, isn't it? Out of Rosie no, O'Reilly, it's second, second foal. foal yeah. He is oh so handsome. He is, uh, yeah. Hollywood. He walks like me, don't you reckon? Uh, yeah, no comparison there, <laughs> Paul. I'm sorry. I got a better set of legs, Paul. <laughs> that's all I'll say. <laughs> he's, uh, yeah, he's a gorgeous boy. This one, uh, he's just stunning. Um, and yeah, he, you know, betting line. He's just a, a lovely type, and um, you know, gets on with. Uh, he's probably sometimes a little bit cautious but once he's sort of worked out that yeah things are okay he's like yep i've got this off he goes again yeah and just he just stands up like he he is quite a tall horse anyway but mm. he makes himself taller um and the like not overly heavy through the body but he he is very racy looking yeah isn't he? he's very racy he's real athletic absolutely mark yeah look i just thought he's a, he's a very tall colt and racy but had a real kind eye when i saw him yep. about three weeks ago like he's from the second crop of betting line so um his first crop's already had a couple of early two-year-old winners in Australia and had a very good debut season in North America, particularly in Pennsylvania where betting line stands as the toughest state for horses to win races. So, um, And here's a horse that is a September foal as well. So, um, you know, by the time you see him next week, he's heading towards that 18-month-old um, situation. And look, that particular family, spank him, thump him, and he's, you know, some very, very good horses in there and he's eligible for all the, the classics, big bread, etc. Rightio. I'm going to throw it to Mark for this one because I can't get this name right. But this one is my pick of the sale. <laughs> on looks, uh, if I had an open budget, this would be the one I'd be looking for. But Mark, I'll throw to you, mate, for this bloke's name for me. <laughs> Thanks for throwing me under the bus. It's all good. But this is, look, lot 153, an art major cult out of uh, Smyrna de Rusevar. I hope I've pronounced Durusu. that right. De Rusu. So <laughs> Smyrna is actually a... Um, a town in just, Turkey. Just so everyone's aware, so I had the go. wrong video up, but we're, we're okay now. We're back to Smyrna, dear Sue. So you're right, Mark. Keep going yep. now, mate. Yeah, there could be any amount of pronunciations for this, but having said that, the first word is actually a uh, town in Turkey. So I've done a little bit of research there for all, to, just for a little bit of culture for today's show. <laughs> um, so this cult, full brother to the Australian two-year-old of the year, Follow the Stars, who's been a uh, fairly handy juvenile size so far, um, off, standing, off standing at start in Western Australia and relocated to Victoria this past season. The Dams had five winners from six foals, um, one of the great pedigrees of um, Lauriston's as well. And, um, you know, like a lot of s staggering speed in this horse's family, particularly in the first three generations. And including, if you go dig a little bit deep, there's a very good new North American horse there called Historic. He had serious, serious speed as well. He's in the third generation. I love this colt, Caff. I love the way he went away, he walks, he has his head down, he just mopes, mopes along and just does it so easy. But he's got rockstar looks about him too, hasn't he? Like he's got a great backside. 
Yeah, he's a very classy colt, um, and he sort of uh, holds himself well all the time. Yep. Um, he's a quick learner, and he's developed really well through this prep, um, and yeah, into that stunning individual that you can see there now. Absolutely, and uh, he's another one to look forward to. I keep pumping up this these uh, when we let them go in the paddock calf. I hope it's as good as what I say it is. That's for sure. I'm going to be in trouble. That's the art major out of Smyrna, Derisu. How do I go, Mark? Outstanding, Paul. <laughs> Thank you very much. Captain Treasurer, speak no evil. Want to watch a filly going somewhere when she walks? <laughs> this was this is another one, isn't it, Kath? Yeah, she's a terrific walker. Um, and, yeah, I, like, man, can she move? She just covered the, covers the ground just effortlessly and um, just stunning to watch. Uh, she's very fleet of foot and, you know, she's very much like a, her mother. Um, she's long barreled, which is typical of her family. Uh, she's a really classy athlete, this filly, um, and she's, yeah, got speed to burn. Yeah, she, she is a looker, like you said there. She, she's quite a leggy, but very, very long barreled, isn't she? And this whole, um, the family, you know, they're lovely long barreled mares and um, they're just tough. Yep. You know, they're tough, they've got a fire in their belly and they will fight to the, to the end. And that's key, isn't it, Mark, when you're looking for brood mares, potential brood mares going forward as well as a good quality racehorse first and foremost? Well, look, yeah, especially these days where it's just speed on speed at that level. Um, and, you know, look, speak no evil, 350,000 Group 1 winner herself, Captain Treacherous Philly, another one. And I would say, from my eye, probably in your top, th- in, the, in the top three fillies in the Northern Rivers draft, just from my eye, um, another one of Bill and Ann Anderson's product. Um, you know, just a beautiful, beautiful filly. And, you know, I think that um, she'll be very, very well sought, no doubt about that. I think she's one that's going to shock a lot of people. If they don't make the effort to go around and have a look at her, they're going to be kidding themselves because they're going to miss out on, on just, just a really nice filly that you wouldn't be expecting. Yeah, well, that's it. And I think people have just got to take the extra time to look at some of these horses, you know. So you've got Thursday and Friday. A lot of these horses will be down there on Thursday. Take the time, get around them and have a good look because, um, you know, there's always a couple of diamonds in the rough in any draft that, you know, probably always go underappreciated. Absolutely. This next one, you say about Diamond in the Rough, this little filly here, she's um, from a great family, Sonny Folly uh, by Bacardi Lindy. Um, I actually called it a filly. It's a colt, isn't it? It's no, it's a filly. I'm going, OK. I didn't have the Fs on there. Leave me alone. <laughs> but, but it's all good. Dave Scott has already rang me today, Caff, wondering when his video is up. So, Dave, here you are. We're, we're definitely looking after you, and it'll be up hopefully tomorrow, Dave. But um, it's a great family, and it's a current family that just keeps winning, including um, Mojito Magic... Uh, Mojito... Dr- Madness. 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 Madness that yeah. won at uh, Bendigo about three weeks ago. So makes it very, very current and a lovely, lovely type. Yeah, she is a lovely type. She's a real sweetheart um, and she's, uh, you know, quite intelligent, covers the ground nicely um, and, you know, great confirmation. One of the one of the problems, Mark, I have when you're editing up a lot of videos is, and, and rest is trying to pick them. Cullen you can pick because he's got the three white feet. That's OK and all the rest. You just pick her straight away, just on looks, the way she yeah. walks. She holds herself the same all the time and just her presence when you look at her, doesn't she? Yeah, she's a very upstanding filly um, and, yeah, there's a lot of class about her and, uh, you know, you can, and the way she moved yesterday, you can just see her trotting around the track, no worries. Absolutely, and Mark, it's a trotting family that, as we say, just keeps getting better, doesn't it? Well, it keeps getting better and, you know, the side... The Sire Bacardi Lindy's been a great percentage sire and very underrated. Just floated around that mark, but always gets a nice horse year in, year out, out of a Sundon mare. The Sundon strain, very, very dominant down here on the maternal side as well. So the, the mare actually won seven races, um, but is actually, um, uh, you know, the dam of Group 1 winners as well. So here's another trotting filly with a really good pedigree, New Zealand and Australian. That's definitely worth look. We talk about rare those rare gems in drafts. This is the one in the trotting draft. Yep, absolutely. You better be careful because there's a couple others and you might get a kneecap. And look, um, there's um, six out of six for the mum, you know. So what do you say? 100% producer. Absolutely. Um, Centurium ATM, all finesse, Catherine. This is a uh, another nice filly in the draft, isn't it? Yeah, so another trotting filly here. Uh, once again, from another classy family. Um, you know, she's a gorgeous filly and she's really blossomed in this prep. Um, she's so muscular and just, um, yeah, just a really powerful, neat type of filly. Um, she, uh, it is a great family and she, you know, knowing uh, Cordy's princess um, locally and having um, dealt with her, she shares a lot of traits that Cordy's princess had as well, um, just in her nature. Um, but yeah, she's a, you know, it's a great family to get into um, and also, you know, she'll trot the house down. Absolutely. And she did yesterday. Mickey Blackmore drove in and threw, um, if he had known which one was trotting around, he might have came back and had a good look, mightn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he, he, might have, he might have stopped and uh, gone from there. But it's a great family and it is 
a, a ripping family to get be able to get involved with from a sales point of view, Mark? Oh, look, it's um, you know, the the family of Claudie's princess. What a star! Four hundred thousand in the locker. Um, you know, Group One winning mayor and just a mayor of her generation. Um, might have been Australian trotting mayor of the year from memory. Yeah. Yep, um, two year old, three year old, and three year old as well. Yeah, yeah correct. Um, one thing I'll say, like she's a very, very strong individual. She's cultish um, to look she at. Isn't she is cultish <laughs> to look at. Um, there's no doubt about that. Her sire actually was a 53 trotter. Um, he made over 700 grand century in ATM. Not a lot, not a lot known about him down here, um, but he was a horse that actually shuttled back to North America this year. Um, so. The word up there is that there are a couple of very smart ones. So um, he was on the plane back to North America. Yep, and he'll be coming back next year, hopefully for Australian buyers or uh, breeders. I suppose so. You suppose so. That's, <laughs> he, he's got my pay grade, mate. That's out, that's out of um, out of your way. Next up is a Pegasus Spur. Is this a half brother? Is it, no, he's not a half brother. It's closely no, related. It's a re- re- it's Very a closely relation. related. Yeah. I haven't got my yeah. catalogue open. I'm doing so the. I'm there and doing this, this is by whim. You guys yeah. have got notes in front of you. This is the nephew of the previous one, isn't yeah. it? Something like that. Yeah, it's something like that. <laughs> and, uh, related. We say about a stamp. This is a family stamp because you wouldn't know the difference between the two. They are definitely um, two different horses, but they both have a similar physique, don't they? And yeah, build they and do. walk. Very muscular individual. Um, he's got you know great big chest on him. He's in, yeah, he's just a really solid little horse. Um, and yeah, good to do anything with. He's got to be a he's, spunk. About, he's got to be a spunk about him, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he I thinks he's a yesterday. ladies' man. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> he was um, he was giving Jack a hard time from time to time yesterday. I don't think I don't think he's going the right way about it. But he'll learn. He'll 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 get there as as he goes. But yeah, you'd have to be wrapped with both these two trotters um, out of that family. I, I think they're great families to get involved with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got three trotters in the draft, and what a three to have. Like both fillies are um, tremendous, and this boy is um, you know yeah. <laughs> Represents his family terrifically. Mark, over to you with the pedigree. Yeah, look, the maternal, the maternal side's a ripper. We just spoke about that in the previous slot. Um, you know, this is the only Pegasus Spur in the sale, a colt. Um, Pegasus Spur, obviously, at one time was on our roster retired a couple of years ago. You've got to remember, Pegasus Spur has left the tr- fastest trotting horse in Australasia in Maori time. So, um, you know, and you think back about that, she, you know, she was a 51.5 trotter and went on to the to go to the elite lot but um great family eligible for all the classics as well so um pegasus spur can leave an early runner absolutely and he's throw, an early type this as i was going to say you got to make sure to get out there and have a look at him early as well yep. because yeah he's yep. he's there last on your list um kath is the art major at a glitzer rally and i am going to put a cover note in for a start here the uh head-on footage of this horse is uh, always just on that little bit of a side because just wanted to keep walking didn't she back towards the camera was keen keen to get back and get the job done yeah she's a, a typical art major filly she's very solid but she covers the ground and just looks really elegant as she goes um <clears throat> her half brother we was a um, captain treacherous colt that went through the sales last year and uh, word is that they um have big wraps on him and he's going along very nicely that's all right that's always key um and as i said she just wanted to keep walking she was a little bit tricky i'll get the i will get the footage calf don't worry it'll be all, but it will be all good but just made it a little bit tricky from time to time walking away she was lovely but she just wanted to get back to that camera she had a bit of look at me about it mark yeah look beautiful filly um november filly by the leading juvenile side down here for a long time in art major um and descends from the family and you know of a genuine superstar and bling it on who's, uh, you know, successfully been the sire of early two-year-old winners this year at his first crack at start. Got the Miracle Mile winner, Baby Bling, in there as well. So this is a pedigree that's stacked. Three generations on the page. And typical art major, probably looks like an early runner to me, um, but eligible for all the big races. And you say about Bling It On, the key part about he, he is, is not just as he's leaving him as a sire, he's coming backwards and forwards. Right? Such a versatile horse himself, isn't he? Yeah, look, he was very versatile and, you know, beautifully managed as well. Like, probably had a little bit of the old Brian Hancock manager, management about him via Luke and Belinda McCarthy. Great two-year-old, great three-year-old. Did what he had to do it for. He just didn't go and race the monsters straight away. And when he arrived there at five, he was ready for the monsters. And um, he's done a great job. He's just been a very, very great racehorse. Fifteen horses in your draft, Kath. Um, 
I think they, you know, I, I can be biased. Um, I think they all look terrific. Um, you'd have to be wrapped um, in what you've got. And you've had plenty of people coming through. One of the slow parts of uh, trying to do video footage and all the rest is when people want to come and inspect them. That takes you away from it. But that is key to getting people here to, to purchase these horses at, at the nutrient sale on April 10 and 11. Make sure they come here and have a look at them. Yeah, absolutely. They're welcome anytime. Um, you just ring and let me know and we'll have them ready for you. And, you know, um, welcome inspections for next year's draft as well. You know what I mean? Like if people want to look at them as weanlings on the ground, then they're always welcome. There's more more here going forward. One of the, it's one of the key things, Mark, I think a lot of people have to be aware of. It's not going to be your normal sale. One, it's over two days. So there's 100 lots going to go through on the Saturday and then another 200 oh, well, just odd anyway going through um, the on the Sunday lot of horses to look at. It's not going to be like any sale we've had here at Oakland Junction for a long, long time that people must make sure they give themselves plenty of time to get around them. If they're only going to do it at Oakland Junction, we're key to getting around here on a farm and looking at them in their own environment. Yeah, look, I think it's crucial to, to, to get around and see them in their own environment before they head down to Oaklands. Um, that four days for, you know, is um, a fairly long stretch for them. But I think rather than get there and try and do your 20 or 30 lots in a short space of time, get round to the farms, view them, but also get there next Thursday and Friday. So when it's probably a little bit less bustle, you have that opportunity to see them, how they've settled in, what sort of horse they are and the environment and how they're coping with it. Um, you know, next week for everybody and for Kath and for everybody that takes a horse to the races, uh, to the sale next week, it's their grand final. So there's a lot of love going into next week. Um, from a lot of people, whether they're taking one horse or 30 or 50 or whatever. So take your time, get there, do your inspections correctly. Um, because, you know, there are some, everyone does things differently. Um, people go there for different reasons, pedigree, type, whatever. But make sure you do your inspections properly and get there a bit early. I think it's a major advantage getting there on the Thursday or Friday. One thing, Kath, just I will go to you, sorry, but uh, Mark was just saying then about making sure you get around to the place and he, I just started thinking about it. Don't leave it to the last minute. Don't rock up on Thursday thinking you're going to have an on-farm inspection when you're loading them up, taking them to, to Melbourne. They've got to be key and aware of those things too, don't they? Yeah, so we'll be, um, they'll be all transported down on Thursday morning. So uh, we'll be well and truly settled in by lunchtime on Thursday and welcome any inspections then in Barn D. Yep, and, and that's key because rock up here on Wednesday and say, oh, we just want to have a look at a few horses. It might not be quite that simple for you because it's a big operation to get them down there and, and have them all settled and ready. You, you, you will still look after them, but yeah. just be aware of what they're asking for. Yeah, yeah. And look, we're happy to try and accommodate anyone best we can, but we'll be down there on the Thursday and, yeah, welcome everything. Are you excited? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I I've been hanging out for this all year. I think it's pretty common. Like, I, I went to Blanche Pools. They're excited. They're nervous. Everyone's nervous and excited. Uh, Pat Driscoll, he's up and about. He's, uh, as I said, offering great incentives for the Kiwis, Mark, to get to get horses. Trotters back over there as well to, to get them back um, at a cheaper a cheaper rate. Louise uh, Toolman on Sunday as well. They Their excitement level, I, they're unbelievable, those people. They were, they were making their garden beds as, as we were rocking up to do the live stream. They, they just... They love it. They're getting right behind it. And I think that's key to building such a great product that Nutrient are trying to do, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, this sale is uh, something that we haven't had before, um, well, obviously, but it just in terms of the the atmosphere and, and uh, the exposure. And I think it's brilliant that uh, these uh, horses are being showcased for the breeders. They're the ones that put all the time and effort and risk and the heartache into it. And, you know, they're, they're actually, you know, getting really good exposure and there's going to be a lot of people there to see them and um, I just wish them all the best of luck. Absolutely, I agree. Mark Barton and the crew are doing a great job. Um, you wouldn't believe he did this, Mark. He actually might have dudded someone on a dinner date. Is that correct? On Monday <laughs> night? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I did get shafted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, might have, he, he might have. He said to me, he said 9 o'clock coming, he was, in, he was in bed. They're getting around, every, which is key, isn't it? Like as well, getting around, making sure they're here. They were, he was here at, um, I wasn't sure if he was taking out to breakfast. He was here at about 5.30, 6 o'clock on the Monday morning or Tuesday morning, whatever day it was. Tuesday morning, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, to have a look at the inspections. But that's, that's another part that's key. But people need to contact them as well, especially if you want to register. That's one of the other key parts, isn't it? Yeah, I think registering, obviously registering as well. But I think what's happening now is that they've, this is a next level sale already, given the, the content that's available to people, given the total professionalism of, nu of Nutrient as well. Um, the bar has been raised. We're heading down the thoroughbred path in terms of, you know, socialising, getting the videos out, having inspections four, six, eight weeks out, not the fortnight before, not the last minute panic, um, you know, people are scoping that sort of thing you know before sales so we're just we're going to another level yep. um 
which we need to go to. Absolutely, and I, and I will say I've got two lots of videos to upload, Yabby Dams and CAFs um, that will be going out over Easter. They'll be getting as many of those up as we can. People are saying, oh, they're a little bit late. We're still two weeks out from the sale, so they, they will, or ten, not, no, not 10 days out. I better not go the two weeks, I will be in trouble. I will get kneecapped, don't you worry about that. Uh, but they are they are coming, but please get out, out on our farms and, ha and have a look around. That's, that's the key part, isn't it? Yeah, and look, um, we could have done the videos and things last week, but as it turned no, out, the couldn't. weather was horrible, so <laughs> no, we, we couldn't. So it's been, um, you know, it's been a full-on couple of days, um, you know, getting these done and getting them done right and showcasing them the best we can. So um, hopefully that will give everyone a bit of an idea of, of what they're looking at. Absolutely. Ben Studd's in the same boat. Every, there was a lot planned for last week, but the weather, God's didn't have that plan you could be worse could have been in new south wales and and the likes but it is it is key thank you very much guys i've really appreciated it calf well done thank you for your hospitality the last couple of days the donuts you bought were sensational oh that's right i bought them didn't yeah. i had to bring my own donuts Mark. send her a bill for that mate mate that's stock round here i always turn up with donuts mate <laughs> this, um, it's unbelievable the staff, they don't even uh, smile the staff they just go oh yeah donuts again they don't yeah, worry about it, it. It's I've, always, unbelievable. I've got a, I've always got a ring ahead here to see if there's any and there's never any mate i have to buy them on the way up so just a little well, we are working hard <laughs> what um so one of the little jokes one of the in jokes i have with kath is that the first time i visited here about four years ago they served me donuts for, for uh, morning tea. So um, was that the last time as well? Yes, it was because Mark was bring, Mark started bringing the donuts after that. So there you go. <laughs> we might be able well to get it. we might be able to get a donut sponsor. I've got Woodlands. I've got your Barristock hat on as well. Andrew will be very happy uh, with that. And sponsorship is key. Love what you're doing, Kath. Thank you very much. We didn't do it the same as what we did last year. What are we going to do next year? We might, we might do a cyber one or something like that. The sky's the limit. Oh, I do already have a few ideas, don't worry. I'm sure you do. That worries me and it worries one Mark as well. yesterday afternoon. <laughs> it worries Mark as well. Mark, thank you for coming. Thank you for giving uh, you a little bit of knowledge as well and uh, I appreciate the time, mate. No, it's a pleasure to be involved with both of you guys and obviously we've got a major relationship with Northern Rivers and, and you, Paul. So, uh, mate, we're happy to chop out where we need to. And don't forget the uh, live yearling parade. It's going to be on Campbell's comments. I'm pretty excited about that. On the uh, Saturday from 12 o'clock onwards, it will also be on Trots Vision, I believe, but Nutrient are bringing that. But I think Woodlands are actually sponsoring that, so we must make, give a big shout-out for the for the uh, the parade. So uh, there's lots going on. It's going to be a lot of a, a different format to what we've been experiencing, so make sure you go. If you're still watching this now, make sure you register. Register, get your, everything filled out. It's a different way of doing things. Nutrient have been banging on for it a long time. Don't rock up on the day and think, oh, I'm just going to rock up, register, and then go and buy a horse. Won't happen that easy. You'll get registered, but it won't happen that easy. So make sure you get registered pre, um, and it'll be a hell of a lot easier, that's for sure. Kath, thank you very much. Mark, thank you very much. Um, loved everything you've done today. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paulie.